I wonder as you look at all of the politics unfolding here in Westminster where I am and all the drama of yesterday, give us the context from your perspective, what difference this makes for your business, how are your, how are your plans looking for Brexit? So for our business at MSCI, there is no substantive change from uh, Brexit at the moment. Uh, obviously, our clients are the largest investment institutions throughout the world, but also in Europe, uh, the UK and the continental Europe, and therefore there will be significant effects on our clients. And uh, you know, we'll have to be uh, watching that, monitoring that, and following them, whether they're investment banks or hedge funds or uh, clearly asset managers. Do you, uh, uh, when you look at um, the moving markets and see increased volatility, Henry, how difficult is it to uh, keep the indexes up to date um, amid sharp moves? It's not a problem at all, Matt. Uh, we've been doing this for almost 50 years now. Uh, we have real-time indices, we have end-of-day indices, we have uh, futures and options, uh, it changes of futures and options trading in many of our indices around the world. So it has not been a, a problem at all. Clearly, uh, you know, we're, we're monitoring those abrupt changes and uh, we want to make sure that you know, the prices are properly reflected in all of our indices on a continuous and real-time basis. So uh, obviously our teams are very much you know, glued to that but uh, we haven't seen any uh, problems at all. And, and just to, uh, in terms of that UK conversation then, Henry, I appreciate that from a business perspective, you're a global business and this is, uh, uh, lim has limited impact. Um, we heard one uh, CEO a little earlier on uh, talking about how the UK currency now behaves much more like an emerging market. Um, that, uh, and we've heard that from other currency traders that they look increasingly on the pound in that way. Is there any history of any asset moving from uh, developed market status to emerging market status? I ask that slightly tongue in cheek because I appreciate that that is not on the cards. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I hope this is not a comparison, but uh, you know, Greece was part of our developed market indices for a while until, until it was downgraded and, uh, and therefore created enormous you know, volatility uh, in that market. I think for, uh, for the UK, there clearly are uh, significant volatility in the financial markets of the UK, especially the currency. Uh, some, some level of volatility in European uh, financial markets, but uh, interestingly to note that in financial markets around the world, whether it's in Asia or in the US, the impact of uh, this uh, Brexit uh, chaos has been uh, muted. And that's probably a reflection of, uh, of the uh, importance or the uh, impact of the, US, of the UK economy and the UK financial markets and the world's financial markets. And therefore, I think we got to take that into context, which is, you know, okay, it's important, but not as important, you know, in the world of financial markets as it used to be. What about the other way, Henry? Have you got uh, any, is there any potential to upgrade some of the EM markets um, you've been doing a lot with EMEA, you've been doing a lot obviously with China. Poland just got upgraded as a developed market by stocks and FTSE. Kuwait recently upgraded by FTSE as an EM market, etc. So do you see any uh, potential there for um, some growth in smaller or less developed markets? Not yet. We clearly monitor many of the markets. Uh, uh, but what, what we are doing right now is we're extremely focused on the uh, on the continued inclusion of the China Asia market into our indices. As you know, uh, earlier this year, we implemented the move of 5% of the value of the large caps into the MSCI Emerging Market Index. Uh, that was a small move, but an important one. We're now consulting with clients on the next phase of that, which is about a 20% value of the large cap and in the inclusion of the mid caps into the Emerging Market Indices will be in a position to report on that by the end of February. But I, we, our focus is very much on China because we believe the China markets, whether it's the equity market or the bond market, will uh, open up a lot faster than people think. Uh, we're hoping to see some very positive news next month or the month after with the uh, 40th anniversary of Deng Xiaoping's reforms. And I think the world is not yet capturing the size and the importance and the rapid move of the opening up of the China's financial markets. 
What? I, let, let me ask about the products that you're working on, Henry. Which are the biggest? I know the ETF space is growing big time. Is that one of the uh, wrappers that you work most closely with? Yeah, ETFs are clearly a major uh, area of focus for us, uh, whether it's uh, market cap indices or factor or smart beta indices or ESG indices, which is a big trend in the world today. Uh, but we're also very focused on, uh, on licensing our equity indices for uh, derivative products, particularly listed uh, futures. Uh, we made an announcement in Saudi Arabia uh, in September that we are uh, partnering up with the local exchange to uh, launch futures on the Saudi market uh, sometime early next year. Uh, we're working to see if we can launch futures on the MSCI China A share index, uh, either mainland China or in a offshore, offshore uh, jurisdiction. We see an opening. The Chinese authorities are beginning to liberalize the derivatives markets, and we want to be part of that.